Hi and welcome to WEH videos. My name is Skip and in this video I'm going to show you how you can mess around with the PNG files that are the background for your 3D cockpit that you've been working on, I hope. So here is our original Dash 8 3D cockpit and we don't have anything other than this little bar up here on top and it's all open sky and I want to show you how you can get it to look more like this. We have a roof on it now and we have this hokey looking post here. This is really roughly done but this is just to demonstrate the things you can do and the more time and energy you put into learning GIMP and stuff, you can probably come up with a very, very nice cockpit. So much of this will depend on the image you have for your cockpit. And so there's not a lot you can do. I really don't like the sharp turn here on this side, but that's because that's how the PNG file looks. And it's the same thing with my famous DC4 that I love so much, it's cut off right here too. There's not much you can do with this file, but you can do things in GIMP to split this and make it look like something else. And I did that and I came up with this. I just cut the image in half and put another half over here. And I created this image for the cockpit, which works really really well. This of course takes a lot more time and effort to do but I find it worth it because I end up with a nice round corner here on the sides and now I have this look when I'm flying so it's much cleaner on the sides here. I've got these posts and this again is on my center monitor. I have three monitors so this is not exactly what it looks like in my simulator, but you can see how much nicer this looks than just having it cut off right here. And these are things that you can do in GIMP if you want to put the time and effort into it. So here's the forward view I have when I have all three monitors up and running, and this is really pretty nice. So I want to show you some really basic things that you can do to improve your 3D cockpit just by making some very minor changes here in GIMP. So let's start with our Dash 8 cockpit here, the one that we got with nothing in it. We want to make a change to this. So what we're going to do is let's just say we shop around and we can find another image that has a panel or a dash up here we want to put and make it look a little bit nicer. So we shop around on the internet or we use a cockpit image that's an X-Plane already. And just to keep this simple, what we're going to do is we're going to use this one I already used. So let's just say here's another image and we just want this top portion here. So we're going to come over here to the rectangle tool. We're going to click on that. And then we're just going to pick the area we want. And this really doesn't matter. We just pick this like so because we can make adjustments to it. We can grab these little boxes here and we can just raise it up and just say we want just that much. So we can just select that. And now we just go up here to Edit, Copy, or Control-C. And then we go back to our original image. And we're going to go up here to Layers and create a new layer. And it's, we want to make sure that it's not set to white or anything else. We want it set at transparency so we can see right through it. And we're going to select OK. And you won't notice anything, but over here you see we have a layer. And it's got the checkerboard on it. That's good. That means there's nothing on it. And so now we can go over here to Edit, Paste, or Control-V to put that piece we copied off the Im other image. Now we just grab it and move it up here and put it where we want. And that's all there is to it. And once we're happy with that, we select any other place here. Let's go over and hit the selector tool. And if we click over here, we lose the highlight. And now we have 
our layer and our original image. So we can get, hit this little dot here and you can see that is gone. And there's our image is gone. So we have two different images now, one right on top of the other. And eventually we're going to put them all together. But if you didn't like this, let's just say you wanted to move it, you can come back over to the picker tool and you can grab this thing and you can move it around. And notice it doesn't affect the image. If we had done this just on the image, just pasted it there, then we could never separate the two again. So now you could take this and you could move it up a little bit and say, I, well, I only want this much showing. You can place it right there. So it's a little bit smaller. So that's why you use layers. And then again, if you don't like what you did, you can just delete the layer. So you can grab the layer, you can drag it down here to that little X, and it'll disappear and you can start over. So let's just say you're really happy with this. We're going to come over to File, Export As. And you're going to get a dialog box here for Export Image, and we're just going to give it a name. So let's just call this Airline Panel Test 01.png, and we export it. And then it's going to ask us if we want to export this image, just accept everything, and you export it. All right, now you have saved that as a PNG file, and you could use that once you rename it to whatever your cockpit name is supposed to be, and you can use it. But let's just say you want to keep going. You've got that one already made. You can still make some changes to this image. So let's just say you want to put a little panel here to make it look more like a window you're looking out of. So we're going to go over here to this little tool here. It looks like a baby bottle with three dots on the side of it. This is the path tool. We're going to click on that. And then we're going to go up here and we're going to click right there. And we're going to come down here and we're going to click here. And then we're going to click there. And we're going to click here. Come back over here. Hold down the shift key. And when we're done with that, we're going to hit enter. And now you see we've got all these little dots running around, these little ants crawling around. So now we can fill this area up with something. So first thing we want to do is click on this little thing. This is active foreground color. We're going to click on that. And over here, we have this little box right here with a little eyedropper. We're going to click that. And that's going to let us choose a color we want to use. And we want to use the same color that's already here. So we're going to click on that. And we're going to go OK. And then we're going to come over here to the Paintbrush tool. And we're just going to go like that. And voila! You now have a new little post here. And we go Select, Select None. And there you go. Now, obviously, I didn't get it all the way down. But you get the idea. You can fill these things in. and make it look a little different. And if you like that, then we can go File, Export As, and start the whole process over again. You could end up with four or five different panels that you could try to see which one you like. Now just make sure when you do the Export As that you give it a unique name for each time. So if you're going to export more than one of these, you need to give it a, a unique name so you can have four or five different panels to choose from, but you're going to have to rename it to whatever that PNG file was originally named and the same name you used to create your 3D cockpit for it to work properly. And here's one more thing, and we probably should have done this a little earlier. And what we want to do is save this GIMP file. So we're going to go up to File, Save. And now it's going to ask to save an XCF file. And we can just use the same name here. And I'm just going to call this panel underscore airliner XCF. And I'm going to save that. And now you can come back and open this XCF file anytime you want. And you can work on these layers again and make more changes to this. So let's just say, well, I just want to try something different. You can come up here and just work on any one of these layers and go through this process again. 
Now there's one really important thing you need to know here. When you put in a post like this for the side, you need to have the checkerboard thingies on this side, the transparency there. If it's not transparent there, if you take this all the way to the edge, you won't have any window on the left side, or same thing on the right. You need to have a little bit of gap here so you don't just box yourself in the cockpit without any way to see out. So anywhere you see these checkerboard areas here, this is where it's going to be transparent. And of course, we need that if we want to see out of the cockpit. Now there's lots of things you can do with this tool that I'm not going to go into. I suggest you go on to good old YouTube and search on working with GIMP and, and how to use these different tools. And you can make shapes and do all kinds of cool things to make this really good. I'm not going to go into that. That's not what this is about. This is just to show you the things that you can do with this PNG. So here's a panel that comes with X-Plane and you can find their panels in the X-Plane folder. Come down to Resources, Bitmaps, and then Cockpits, and then down to Panels. And here's a bunch of PNG files that you can use when you're creating your own plane in Plane Maker. And so you can get one of these if you want and modify that and make it fit for your airplane. Just say you got an airplane, you don't like their panel at all. You can start from scratch. And let me show you how to do that. Here's the panel. Now one thing about X-Plane, they like their images to be image canvas size 1024 by 1024. Or you could have a 20 by 48. They kind of like that size. However, we've been doing this little 3D cockpit and these other images, especially this image here is nowhere near those dimensions, but if you can use those dimensions, I guess that's what X-Plane recommends, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. However, it might affect what your instruments look like in the cockpit. They may not be perfectly round, but we can make adjustments for those back in GIMP by expanding the cube, making it a little tiny bit wider to accommodate for any oblong shapes that we may have. And we're probably going to have to do that for this little dash 8 because it is a, quite a bit wider than the other images. And so the instruments probably won't look perfect. And I'll go over that in another video. So here's an image. And again, we're going to go to image canvas size and we can see 1024 by 1024. So let's just say that we want to make two of these and make one so we end up with something like this. So we're going to take this image and we're going to go over here to File New. And now it tells us we want a new image. Well we're going to double that image so we're going to make this 20 by 48. And then we're going to click on Advanced Options. This is very important. And come down here to fill back on color. It needs to be transparent. Otherwise, it's not going to work at all. So we're going to select OK. And here's that new image. So we're going to come over here and we're going to take this and we're going to go Edit, Copy, come back to our image. We're going to go Edit, Paste, and make sure we got the selector tool on. We're going to grab that and we're going to put it over here and we want to get it right in the corner there. Looking good. Now let's go back to our image and we are going to go image, transform, flip horizontally. That's the other side now and we go edit, copy, and we come back to our image and we go edit, paste. And then we are going to grab that and move it over here. And then we're going to move it around and get it positioned just right. So we're going to use the control key and our center mouse wheel and we're going to zoom in. And now we're going to grab this guy and just position it so it looks absolutely perfect. 
line that up as best we can. But I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. You get the idea. We're going to use the control key and zoom back out. And then we are going to click over here, any old place. And there's our panel. So now we have one panel. And if we go up to image size or canvas size, we see we have a 20 by 28. That should be 48 by 1024. Good grief, I did it again. This should be 2048 by 1024. Pretty simple. So one thing you need to know when you're changing the panel like this, especially the dimensions, or you're just not using the regular PNG that came with your airplane, you're going to have a lot of work to do. So if we open up Plane Maker, and here's my DC4. When we go to standard 2D panel, you can see I put that other panel in there, and now it's a mess. Instruments are all over the place. I'm going to have to reposition everything. So with anything you do requires a whole lot of work in Plane Maker to reposition all of the instruments. And this panel, as you can see now, comes all the way over here with absolutely nothing. So these instruments here actually are way over here on my other panel. Let me show you. And now you can see where the instruments are correctly placed on this panel. And from that we can understand that in Plane Maker it doesn't really care what that image is in the background. You are just going to place these instruments relative to the image you have back here. You could have a picture of Mickey Mouse there and place your instruments and that would be your cockpit. And just to prove that, let's just go up here and take another look at the 2D panel. And there you see a picture of Mickey now and now he is our background for our instrument panel. So enough of that nonsense. And just one more thing, we come up here to the rectangle tool, we can select that and we can pick this area right here really nice. We hit the delete key and now we've gotten rid of that. So as you can see, there's an awful lot you can do here to make a panel that you really like. In the next video, I'll go over a more in-depth discussion on how to place the instruments on your panel when you do resize it. So that's it for this little video on messing around with your PNG file. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this, please click the like button. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them. I answer them all. Thanks again for watching and God bless.